Hey, live. Live? Hey, everybody. I'm just going to lower this because uh, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. I'm Little Ray, everybody, uh, from Little Ray's Nature Centers. And uh, I think, first and foremost, I, I got my car this morning and I was driving in here today and I was uh, super, super, uh, you know, excited. I had a couple meetings here. Um, we've done a bottle drive and uh, had this unbelievable outpouring of support, as you can see. Uh, there's a bunch of cans here, bags of, of cans. We have our wine bottles, we're just sorting everything. Uh, we've made an appointment to bring them in. I was going to come get a nice photo and talk about, you know, um, how thankful I am, which I super am, uh, for everybody who took the time to drop bottles off to bring them in. I have our staff in here, Alex, James, Luke are in here, um, sorting bottles. Got, uh, oh my gosh, Nancy, 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 and Adriana, a couple of our volunteers that helped us out come in, help us feed the animals, care for the animals right now. And about halfway um, driving here, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy to me right now. It, it is absolutely crazy, and I got here furious. Uh, with Kyle, why are we doing this? Kyle. Yes. Why, why, what are we trying to do? We're trying to raise money for the nature center. We're trying to basically pay the bills, feed the animals. It's as simple as this. So we're doing a bottle drive with the community and bringing in as much as we can. And, and I, I don't want to, I do not want to destroy uh, your enthusiasm for this, Paul. It, it, was, it was your idea, yourself and Ginny and, and Julie, but I am irate right now. And because what people are looking at right now is the reality of what the hardest affected sectors are going through. This is what businesses are going through. We've been in business for 26 years. I am irate with our government. 26 years we've been in business, and from 2015 to 2019, I have paid almost $2.4 million in taxes to our provincial and federal governments. I have paid out more than $6 million in wages to employees. And our government is, sits there, Doug Ford, Justin Trudeau, and said, we're not going to let small businesses fail. We're going to be there for small business. We've been shut down. Our entire industry is shut down. From April to December, we operated at a cash flow loss. Not some imaginary profit loss number. We are down $750,000 in cash flow. And that is including that's including the wage subsidy and the rent subsidy and the programs we have. And we're shut down. We get a program from the Fed Dub Ontario Regional Relief and Recovery Fund on June the 15th. And that money was to last us till December the 15th. And there is now a second round of funding. Well, we've been over 95% shut down in our revenue. We are now up for this second round of funding that we applied for in the middle of December and I was told it would be four to five weeks. It is almost the middle of February and I was told on Friday to check the end of this week coming. The Ontario government finally steps up and says we're going to give companies a, a $20,000 grant because we fully shut you down again. Fully shut you down. Well, what about the $20,000 grant for April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December? And we have three companies, and one of those companies got into the system. And we're still waiting to know how much they're going to give us and when it's going to come. The other two companies, we've been trying to apply from the beginning, and they have a glitch in their system. We have called them seven times. And every time they're like, you're in the queue. You're in the queue. You're in the queue. My knees are trembling. I'm so upset. I'm literally having my staff coming in, 
So we can feed our animals. And we're trying to do it literally 10 cents at a time. And the federal government has the nerve to release a program called the HASCAP program. They announced they were going to do this in October, December, November, excuse me. And now this is the program for the hardest affected sectors. For businesses like mine that have been around for 26 years, we have the largest exotic animal rescue in the country. We have literally supported all levels of government across the country. Provincial, we have animals that have come from the province of BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, literally Yukon, Nunavut, Newfoundland. We've helped the federal government. Environment Canada was seized and confiscated animals. And our federal government has the nerve to release a program for the hardest affected sectors to say, you have to fully borrow your way out of this. We know you've been shut down for a year. So now, not only are we going to let you borrow the money, we're going to charge you 4% interest. My neighbor got a mortgage for 1.55%. Not only are you charging me, you're not even giving me the cheapest money in the country. For anybody out there that thinks that Doug Ford or Justin Trudeau gives a shit about the businesses that have been most affected by this, you're crazy. And, and if you cannot tell, this us trying to make money five and ten cents at a time so I can pay my staff and feed my animals? When you shut us down and you have the audacity to say you give a shit about small businesses. If I hear one of you say it one more time, I'm going to throw a baseball through my TV and I'm going to send you the bill. Because it is lip service. At best. Companies are dying right now. January is our busiest month of the year. January, February, March, and April is our four busiest months of the year. By far. It is when we make all of our profit. It is reasonable that Little Ray's Nature Center is going to have to borrow $1.6 to $2 million to get through this. I'm 49 years old. And I have invested my life into this. My staff and volunteers have been unbelievably committed to this. And we are being left out to dry under some pretend governments that, that pretend that they care and do absolutely nothing to support the hardest affected sectors. I am tired. I am fed up. And I, I, I am sorry, but the BS that's being fed to people about how these factors, sectors are being affected, there are companies, Bell Canada is just one example of a company that's taken $122 million. $122 million in wage subsidies, and not only have paid dividends every quarter, their dividends have went up every quarter since the pandemic hit. People ask me, how is it possible I could have possibly lost $750,000 from April to December? Well, here's what people don't know. We are still expected to make our full payments to the banks. If we had a loan before this, we are making full, full principal and interest payments. Three months interest only. Three months in the first nine months of the pandemic. BDC is expecting us to make full payments. Three months of interest only payments. Our insurance company, even though we're down 95%, we have not got $1, $1 is a rebate from our insurance company. We are paying 100% of our loan payments, 100% of interest to these organizations that we had before, full payments. We're not shut down. We're just closed. And we have over 900 animals that need to be fed. 
I, I am sorry, but, but, but our government reducing us, and, uh, and for me to be coming in here thinking that this is this massive success, that we have all this generosity from our community, and, and I've had multiple people say, do another GoFundMe page. Go out to the public. I did not start this 26 years ago, so I would be left out high and dry by my government to fend for myself and to cry for help every time we had trouble. I shouldn't have to be going to my friends and the community to donate money. And I sure as hell shouldn't have to collect bottles. Like I came in here feeling like a homeless person trying to buy a sandwich. But the reality is, we don't have any revenue coming in. And if we don't collect these bottles, we can't feed our animals. And I can't pay my staff. Everybody, I, I want you to think about this. Because I am not the only business that has not been supported. It's not just me. I have very unique expenses because of the nature of my business and because we have live animals. I have very unique expenses. So, so somebody made the comment, but for years you're given these animals uh, uh, from, the pro from the provinces for free. They give them to you for free. What people don't realize is in the last 15 to 20 years, we have taken in and placed an additional six to 7,000 animals that we have literally sent, taken in, excuse me, cared for, made sure they were not euthanized, and sent these animals around the world. Of the 900 plus animals we have right now, 80% of them never leave the zoo. Another 50% are off display. People don't even see them. These are animals that we're caring for as a sanctuary until the best long-term solution can be found. Everybody, there are a ton of businesses out there that literally, that, that are down hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, that right now are trying to feed themselves five to 10 cents at a time. Whoever donated this bottle and every other bottle here, I want to thank you. But it crushes me that after 26 years, I am literally, literally being reduced to beg people for bottles in order to make sure that our Rescue and Nature Center survives. When you're driving home, after you see this video, I want you to pay attention and I want you to look in the windows of the stores that are closed. And do not make any assumptions about that business and what they're getting and what they're not getting. You need to support those businesses. Because I can tell you right now, the businesses that are the most affected by, in your community are not getting support from their governments. We, we are not. We are being asked to borrow money and pay interest so people can profit from us, so that we can come out of a pandemic after being forced to shut down. Everybody, I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this, but I'm gonna get out of this. And at the end of the day though, these things mean the world to me philosophically that this many people were able to step forward and give these out to us. Our staff, it means the world to them. But this, this is not going to feed 900 animals for the next six months to a year. Everybody, please support your local businesses. Please advocate to your MPs and your MPPs. Ask them why is it that the hardest affected sectors are not getting proper support. Lisa McLeod, she's an MPP, Heritage and Tourism. She's in the PN. She knows exactly who I am. I've been on a call with her. Last week I'm on a call with her and she proudly announces two programs. One of them is a $100 million program for our sector. But you have to be nonprofit to apply. Nonprofit. Is Lisa McLeod, please tell me. Is that because only nonprofits are affected by the pandemic? Is is that is, is that why the program is only a hundred million dollars for the nonprofit sector? Because the pandemic only affects them? 
She proudly announces a $25 million program to the arts, for theaters. I'm a huge supporter of the arts, and anybody here knows this. I think it's great. They deserve the money. But let's just make sure that we understand. When those theaters closed, their chairs did not need to be fed. The stage did not require a certain temperature and humidity. And the drapes didn't need a veterinarian to come check on them. Their expenses are nothing compared to some other industries. I want them to be supported. We deserve support too. Please, everybody, please reach out to your MPs, reach out to your MPPs, find out why small businesses, the highest affected sectors, are not being properly supported. Ask them how come. Ask your MP, why is it that we're not, not supporting the hardest and highest affected sectors. But why are you charging them 4% interest to borrow money? Ask them who's profiting. Who's profiting off of the backs of the companies that have been hit the hardest by this pandemic? Because I want that answer. And I'm going to share this on my MPs page. And, and Francis has been good with me, but Francis, I need that answer. Francis Druin, I want that answer. Who's profiting from my losses? And I want to be clear. I do not think that the government should hand me $1.7 million to get through this and just say, here you go, because everybody would take it, whether you have an intent to survive or not. But some type of a tiered system. If you're down 50%, the government covers 20% of the loan. If you're down 60%, maybe they cover 40% of the loan. For businesses that are down 20%, uh, or excuse me, down 80%, maybe, maybe they cover 60% of the money that you need. But to say that we have to borrow every single dime that we need now as the recovery strategy, and you're going to charge us 4% interest, and you still have a shutdown, is a slap in the face to every single small business that have been there for years to help drive jobs in our economy. Everybody, I'm Little Ray. Please talk to your MPPs. Please talk to your MPs and ask them about these programs. And I can tell you, whatever you hear, small businesses are not being proportionately supported. The biggest businesses are being allowed to run, run at full steam, and make record profits, while the small businesses in your community are taking it on the chin and suffering. Everybody, I'm going to be making some more posts about this week to make it very clear. I'm going to post our budget so everybody can see how we are down $750,000 in cash flow. I am completely transparent. There is nothing that you can ask me that I will not answer. For everybody who donated these bottles, I thank you very much for these. Not just for the act of kindness of taking the time to drive here and drop these bottles off and to try to support us, but for helping me have this epiphany. And I think this Corona bottle, I, I didn't even pick up a Corona bottle on purpose, but to pick up this Corona bottle is, is ultimately, I think, really going to show people that the reality of what businesses are facing right now. And, and please know I am advocating for, for the rights and futures of all small businesses in the hardest affected sectors, not just mine. Uh, thank you, guys. I hope you have a great week with your family. I hope to have some good news at the end of the week with respect to support, because uh, we are dying once again. Uh, our staff, we do have a GoFundMe page that's going to be going up today. And at this point in time, I have to assume that we are going to have no true support from the federal government or from the provincial government, and that no one's coming to help us. Uh, and, and it crushes me that 26 years later, I'm going to be reaching out to the public to say, here's our reality, here's how much money we need to survive. Uh, we just can't borrow money forever uh, and, and hope that the government allows us to operate at some capacity again in the future. Uh, and I thank you guys very much. Hopefully, hopefully everybody gets up from this and we'll start supporting small businesses. Start. Please continue to support the small businesses in your community and just fully understand this, this is what we're reduced to. Have a great week.